Um, so let me then show you what happens now that I've got all this information set up. I've got a subject variable, a gender variable, and an IQ variable. Um, before I tell you about how to save data and about output and so on, let me just show you what happens when you try to run a statistic. The way to run a statistic in SPSS is extraordinarily simple. Even though you've got all these options up here across the top, um, you'll see file, edit, view, data, transform, anal analyze, graphics, utilities, add-ons. Most people, when they start looking at those, they begin to get ill or sick immediately. Because there are all those options and they're saying, oh my goodness gracious, where do I look to find what I really need to know about SPSS? That's very understandable. There's a bit of good news, however. Basically, if you want to analyze any data set that you've entered, you really only need to focus on two of these options. And the one you need for, to analyze is called Analyze. That's the option under which most of the statistical tests for SPSS are located. So if you just remember, when it comes time to analyze data, what I really need is I need to click on that analyze option. You will be okay. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, can you just add a question? Are you seeing this okay? Okay. Um, don't be intimidated by SPSS. One other thing about it is that for every choice you make in your menu option, there's so many choices you feel as you're going to faint because there's so many choices you say to yourself, which choice do I choose? All I can tell you is try to stay cool, stay calm, and use common sense. And once you've done this a few times, you'll get used to the options that you need. Most of the options you see you'll never need here. They're esoteric statistics or quality control statistics, or something that you, that you will learn about if you need them. Otherwise, you don't need to worry about them. But in the case of the Analyze menu, it has a whole variety of choices. And you can choose um, you know, whichever uh, test that you feel you'd like to use. Uh, for example, in the third option, there's Compare Means, which will have t-tests on it. Uh, correlate, which will correlate the variables, is the one, two, three, four, fifth choice, and so on. So don't worry about all of it. Just focus on the choice that you need. And your textbook is very good at pointing you, as it are my exercises, where I tell you exactly what to click on to choose um, uh, which you know test you'd like to run. Now, in the case of our particular data set, what I'm going to be asking you to do is to correlate to the two variables that we have really in the data set which is gender and IQ. Because the research question I'm asking is, is there a statistically significant relationship between gender and IQ in the subjects in my data set, my eight observations in my data set. So if I want to do correlation, which choice do you think I should choose on the menu? If I'm going to do a correlation, which option on this menu do you think I should choose? That's a really good guess. I love it. Let's try it and see what we get. Now, when you choose, notice how if you make a choice, you immediately get some other choices. This is part of the SPSS desire to drive you insane. Don't let it drive you insane. These are merely choices underneath that particular one that you just made. So under correlate, you have choices. Bivariate, partial, and distances. Now, a lot of people like to use fancy terms in statistics because they think if they use fancy terms that will intimidate people and scare them away. Don't be afraid. Bivariate means, bivariate means two variables. That's all it means. So if you have two variables, which we do, because we have two variables in our data set we're interested in, we're interested in gender and IQ and what's the relationship, you click on bivariate. And notice at the top of the box that pops up, it will say bivariate correlations. So don't ever let it be said that SPSS is not friendly. It's quite friendly in its own perverted way. Um, you will see in one of the boxes, and by the way, I have to warn you, each test you might choose, correlation, t-test, ANOVA, might have a slightly different look, but you're going to get the same process. A box will pop up, okay? 
And in one of the boxes, you'll see all the variables you entered in your data set, usually on the left side. We entered three variables that recognize subject, gender, and IQ. And it will then have a little arrow and another box, and you're supposed to tell it, since you said you wanted to do bivariate correlation, that means what? Bivariate means two variables. So it's, it's just letting you, it's letting you decide which variables you would like to choose in order to run your bivariate correlation that you said you want to do. Well, we know subject is simply a holding variable. It's a subject number variable. It's helping us. So we're not interested in including that in the correlation. But we do want to have a correlation between gender and IQ. So we'll highlight gender, click on the arrow, and pop it over to the variables box. But we're doing a correlation. We can't do a correlation with one variable. We've got to have two. Fortunately for us, there's one other one that we need to do a correlation between gender and IQ. So I'm highlighting IQ over here. Then I'm clicking on the box to send it over to the variables box. This is not rocket science, is it? I mean, this is not too bad, I hope. So now we have the two variables we'd like to use in the correlation. Now, before you rush and click OK to get started, and it's so tempting to rush because, you know, we'd like to get this done, statistical stuff done as soon as possible. Never rush. Notice that in any box, depending on the statistic, there will be different options. And sometimes it's worth unchecking extra options that the computer will try to give you. So you might check with your textbook. Getting less output is often worth more because you get less confused. And in this case, it's saying to you, it, that it will give you a Pearson correlation, a Kendall's tau b, or a Spearman correlation. And it has the Pearson box checked. Well, for our purposes, even though this is a demonstration, because this is a small data set, we probably would actually want to you know, choose Spearman. But we're not going to worry about that today. We're just going to assume that Pearson is what we want. Pearson is what you use if you have interval data and you have a minimum of 30 observations per group. Actually, a little less would be OK. If you have a small sample size you, that does the correlation by ranks instead of the interval way, you would click on Spearman instead. Kendall's tau, don't worry about that. It sounds like some fancy dish at a restaurant. Don't even worry about it. Test of significance down here, it gives you a choice. One-tailed or two-tailed. Now, one of the reasons why I'm always asking or, or appealing that people be asked to take statistics before they take SPSS is that a lot of this explanation is much easier if you've already taken a st uh, statistics class, but it doesn't matter. Even if you haven't, you're okay. Unless you have a very specific special research situation always assume a two-tailed test needs to be run. And when you write your research questions that are associated with your statistical analysis, don't make them directional. Because you really don't know in a correlation which way the correlation is going to turn out. And if you have a t-test that looks for differences in means, you don't know a priori which way, which means is going to be higher or lower. So don't use a directional test unless you have a very special situation. Sometimes in engineering and the natural sciences, there are very good reasons for looking for differences or relationships in one direction. But in the social sciences, we cannot be that accurate. We cannot be that certain. So unless you have a special situation, always make sure that you have the two-tailed uh, option clicked. You don't really get that much of a pop, by the way, for those of you who know something about stats already. You don't get that much of an advantage statistically in a one-tailed test anyway. So stay with the two-tailed test, um, regardless of whichever test you choose.